This video is sponsored by Capture One. Hello to all my favorite people. I'm Lucy. I chat about photography and creative business on the channel. Now, one of the most valuable skills as a photographer is the ability to see the big picture. And recently I have found the best and easiest tool to make sure your shoot goes to plan every single time. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the top five ways that you can improve your studio photography using Capture One for iPad. First up, let's talk about tethering. Shooting tethered essentially means hooking up your camera to a second display so you can monitor your shot, look at your composition and check your focus. Doing a photo shoot without a tethered display is essentially like going on a road trip without using a map. Yes, you will get there eventually, but there's probably gonna be a lot of detours and stress along the way. Whereas if you just use a map, you know exactly where you're going, how you're gonna get there, so you can just enjoy the ride. So now we know why we want a tethered display, so how can you set one up? Capture One for iPad makes this ridiculously easy. Just open up the app and attach your camera to the iPad. You can do this wirelessly with some cameras, but in my opinion, using a cable is the most professional, reliable, and fastest option. If you wanna know what cable and gear I'm using, click the description in the link below for all my in-studio gear. Next, create your capture album for the shoot. I'll call this one Factory 163 because that's where we're shooting today, and that's it. Now as you take pictures, they'll pop up in real time on the iPad, ready for you and your clients to review. And that brings us to collaborating on set. I was recently watching a masterclass with Annie Leibovitz, and in it, you really get to see her process on set and how she goes about capturing a photo. And one thing really struck me that you always see on professional sets for publications like Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Vanity Fair. The pros are always reviewing their photos in the moment and getting feedback right then and there. For example, in this shoot, after reviewing the photos on the iPad, we realized the background was kind of lacking and Max felt he wasn't really vibing with some of the poses. So we changed up the scene, added a few things, did a different pose to create a much more dynamic image. Let's actually see what Max had to say about using the iPad to review photos. Yeah, I think it's very, very helpful. I find being able to see kind of in real time, especially if you're not a professional model, I am not in case you can't tell, uh, I find it's a lot quicker to learn right as you're doing it. So when you can see the photo of, hey, I look super great there, and then the next one you're like, ooh, that's crunchy, it's really beneficial for you to teach your body what to do, teach your face what to do, and get that immediate feedback as opposed to waiting until the photo shoot's over and then seeing the yeah. selects kind of a week later. Yeah. It doesn't really help you improve in the moment, but honestly, I've even seen some improvement in myself and just being able to kind of stop, quickly take a peek of what works, what doesn't work, and it's super, super helpful. All right, so we've talked about tethering and collaborating, and now let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Probably the number one thing holding you back from wanting to shoot with a tethered display and that's thinking that the clients are now going to see the raw unedited photos i know i know this makes me super uncomfortable because you and i know that the final product changes so much in that editing process it's just as important if not more so than actually shooting the photo but luckily capture one has an amazing feature for this it's called styles and also in all the editing panels so you can think of styles like presets and preload them or create them on the fly in this shoot i took a couple test photos in the space then edited them with styles to alter exposure vividness, pre-sharpening, and grain until I was really happy with the look. Once you apply the settings to one photo in your capture album, it automatically adds those settings to all the photos you take as you take them in real time. I know this is so cool and such an awesome feature. So this way you can still create a vibe and style for your photos as your clients view them in real time. Of course, you can always change the adjustments later, but this is just such an amazing feature to give your raw photos a much more polished look while your clients are viewing the iPad and viewing the photos, so you don't have to have that uncomfortable feeling about sharing completely raw photos. The next way to improve your photography is by creating a super efficient workflow. I think that we have all been in the scenario where we've taken a ton, probably too many shots, and we've just kind of thought, I hope I got the shot in there. Like, there's gotta be a good one. I took so many, like there's gotta be a good one in there. So I think the app creates a much more efficient workflow starting right on set and flow 
flowing seamlessly to the editing process. And a big part of this is that you are reviewing your photos as you go. So you basically know when you've gotten good enough ones. It's not like a guessing. It's like, I see it right there that's gonna be one of the good shots. So one of my favorite features in the app is rating and color tagging. I love doing this at the shoot because it saves me so much time trying to call through photos later. This is a perfect task to do in between takes, maybe when the model is changing to a new outfit, the set is being updated, or when there's really any kind of break in shooting. For me, the easiest way to tag the photos is to give five stars to any photo that I know I at least want to review later on. Finally, upload to the cloud. When you're done your photo shoot, you can synchronize your favorite shots via cloud transfer. This is gonna send all your photos directly to the Capture One desktop app. Also, if you're not into cloud transfer, your camera still saves all the photos to the SD card as well. So they're saved on the iPad and your SD card. So you can really go about uploading and, and editing further with them any way that you like. Now, the iPad app is really meant as a companion piece to the Capture One desktop app. So while you can use this on its own, it really is amazing as an enhancement to the over one like Capture One ecosystem because this is so great to use on set, save time, tethering, and showing your clients what you're doing, and then calling, and then going into Capture One on the desktop to do all your really intense editing. Now, when selecting which photos to send to the cloud, remember how I said I give a five-star rating to any shot I want to work with later on? I actually use that rating as my initial culling system. So all you have to do is go to your collection, click this filter button, and select Organize by Rating. Then I highlight all my five-star images at the top and click Send to New Album. I've titled this one Factory 163 Selects. So now I have a new album of just the best photos. So I don't have to bother uploading the images that I really don't care about or never need to see again. Click Add to Cloud and send them to the cloud. So that's how easy it is to use Capture One for iPad to improve your photography. If you guys wanna try out Capture One, which I highly suggest you do, click that link down in the description below to download the app. Now, if you like the photos in this video, I'm actually gonna be showing you how I edited some of these pictures in the Capture One desktop app, which has recently been updated. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to get edits like these. So if you wanna see that, subscribe, hit the bell, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, love you lots.